Hello, welcome to another episode of This Is How They Do It. My name is Kevin Flynn. We're brought to you by our friends at Coast Materials. And we're here at Drecker Brewing in Fargo, North Dakota to find out how they do it. How do they take handfuls of grain and barley and malt and turn it in to a delicious malted beverage that comes right out of the tap when you ask it to. I don't know if it gets any better than that. Oh, ah, Beautiful. We're at Drecker Brewing in Fargo. Let's go find out how they do it on another episode of This Is How They Do It. We're here at Drecker uh, at the bar, kind of in the tap room. Tom, how are you, man? Hey, Welcome to the show. Doing? Good. Thanks for thanks for coming. You bet. So, I guess uh, a couple of questions I have right away. What was this building before? Sure. So before that, we acquired it. It was it had been abandoned since like roughly the late 80s. Yep. Um, Someone said there was like a foot of pigeon poop in here when you guys came something in. Something like that. I don't yeah. know. We, we didn't identify the feces, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Essentially, this whole building had that second floor. So the whole yeah. thing was covered in that second floor. Um, and prior to that, what it, actual the function of this building was built for was for doing maintenance on railway or like yep. rail engines. Yep. So what they would do, each bay, they kind of set up in three bays here yep. with the doors. Um, and what we they would do is pull in an engine in each bay and like work on them. And like the machine factory, like the machine shop was right over in that portion of the tap room over there. Yeah, to the um, north side here. And then, yeah, so they would pull those in yep. off the, there was a giant roundhouse on First Avenue that actually like three, like, we had the aerial footage from like a long time ago and it was like probably six times the size of this where they would do the round roundhouse yeah, stuff yeah. Um, but yeah so if you can kind of see too like some of this is fire damage obviously but some of it also is um, from soot yeah. so like when they would run the coal engines because yep. they'd yep. run them in the building and that's why the skylights are in there too that's so ventilate the engines yeah. and things like that so yeah pretty cool piece of history that we're fortunate enough to be inhabiting. Well, and that's the first thing I thought when I saw the transformation happening here and thought, what's ha you know, what is happening? And what an amazing transformation when you yeah. come in here to enjoy a cold Drecker beverage. Yeah. Um, where'd the name Drecker come from? How did that come up? Yeah, so it's a, um, it's kind of a amalgamation of a couple different like Icelandic and Norse terms. Yeah. Um, one of them, the Drekirs, were the dragon headed ships. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then Drekka means to go like, it's Icelandic for like a slang to go out and like drinking. Okay. Like, kind of like that. Um, and then we just kind of mashed those together and made it sound marketable, essentially, yeah. just because for a while it was Drakkar, D-R-A-K-K-R, and then no one wanted to be, a, we didn't want people to be like, oh, like the Drakkar like Noir. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, just, just settled on Drekker and that's just kind of how it's been ever since. So. Um, talk about the initial process. You, you came about a year into it and uh, ended up uh, being one of, the, one of the five owners now. There was four founders. Um, Talk about like the first beers that they did. I mean, and you look now, which we'll take a little walking tour here, but this facility, I mean, it is really unbelievable. I mean, what you're putting out, the amount you're putting out, and the different varieties you're putting out. Where did it kind of start? Yeah. Uh, just like anything else, it started as like a hobby for the, the four founders. And, yep. um, you know, back then craft beer was yeah. craft porter, craft pale ale, you know, that kind yep. of stuff. And so In that's how we, yeah. That's how the brewery started too. I mean, downtown was our original location, just a yep. little ways down First Avenue. Um, and that would be where we did, you know, our Irish Red is still, it's just recently got eclipsed by one of our flagship IPAs, but that was still for the longest time the thing we made the most of, the thing we sold the most of. Um, so things like the Red Ale, our chocolate milk stout, uh, pale ale, IPA, things like that is kind of how we started. And then just through our own kind of curiosity and things like that, we delve more into this like what can we push beer to be um, you know we talked earlier just in passing about the ice cream you know yeah. think, like we're taking beer to a level like we could do basically anything with it um, yeah. uh, and that's kind of where where the stuff developed with and why we have this building is we're starting to do these things called smoothie style sours which would be adding a ton of you know roughly like 20% by volume of fruit okay. to a beer yeah. uh, and now we're up to close to 45 50% on some of these beers um, and those basically create what would be considered an alcoholic smoothie, yeah. Um, yeah. with with the basis being grain, grain made yeah. beer. So, um, wow. and that's kind of how it took off. And then, just the driving factor for this place was uh, a little more distribution in the Minneapolis area. And then slowly we've spread out. Now I think we're in 20, 
28 states, and I'm pretty sure we just opened 29, um, as well as we're like overseas in Japan, yeah, that's uh, great. the UK or uh, EU and stuff like that too. So. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the ice cream I hear is delicious, but uh, don't eat too much of it. Apparently, it's a it's a uh, it's a fun dessert. Let's just say. I want to use that for your Brandy Alexander next time. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, let's, we're going to take a tour. Let's go take yeah. a tour and see what's up. This is our, one of our many storage areas. This is dry storage for grains. We're trying to take the malted grains, converting the starches in the grain to sugar, fermenting that with yeast, and creating alcohol. Um, so depending on how you use those malts, how, how they interact, um, that's how you develop the beer that you're going for. One portion of the flavor profile of the beer you're going for um, just as kind of like a quick example, like our red ale that I mentioned earlier, the flagship has 11 different types of malt in it, whereas, but it's like 80% of that base malt and then the, the last 10 are that 20%. So really small amounts, wow. different things, and you're able to manipulate color and flavor and stuff with that, just that small 20%. Essentially what we do is we're feeding it into this two roll mill right here. And what that does is mentioned earlier that we're trying to get those starches yeah, and convert yeah. those. So what happens is when we're adding a specific temperature water, enzymes within these grains are breaking down those starches into sugar. So what we want to do here is we're just cracking the grain. We're not actually making like a flour or anything. We're just trying to expose the starches. So I'll grab you an example here. You can kind of see those those white those white pieces like that. Yeah. So that's the starch. That's like starchiness that right. has, has been created by the way yep. the grain has been processed. These are these are not just raw grain. They've been kiln roasted. Malting, right. the process of malting is like, usually involves some sort of roasting or drying yep. or like sometimes even like hydrating them and then roasting them. Gotcha. So this goes through this machine. It looks like it's getting augered up. We'll auger it up to the top. So above that tank, we'll see in a little bit. It's called the grist case. So it's just a big rake in there that mixes it all together. Right. And then we're adding it with water. So it's kind of like, it'll homogenize as you kind of go. And I would imagine every beer you make has a different recipe for this. Pretty much, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Now what is that coming out of there? So that's what we call spent grains. We've added that with the sugar, or we've yep. added that with the water. We've pulled off all that sugar water yep. after kind of steeping it. Um, and then that's what's left over. So still gonna be a little bit of residual sugar and stuff on there. So what yep. we do is we just put in these bins and then NDSU's dairy farm comes and picks up, you know, three tubs of that a day. We okay. milled it, we augered it up here. Yep, we're going went into the grist case up here, just a way for us to be able to not have to delay ourselves. Uh, yep. We have what's called a four vessel system. There's four different tanks up here. We're able to take each part of the process and separate it for time reasons. So as right. you can see, we're mashing in a beer right here. Logan's boiling a beer over here, and he just actually sends a beer out of the Whirlpool into one of the fermenters. And this is a stage in the process where we can gain some efficiency by boiling off. So the more water we lose, the higher alcohol we have. Oh, okay. So, sure. you know, the more vigorous you can keep this boiling, the more water you lose, the less grain you need to use. That all kind of flowing into that efficiency kind of flow chart. It's amazing the science. I mean, really, really the yeah. science that goes into this process. People like to ask me, like, are you a brewmaster? And I'm like, no, I'm not a brewmaster. You have to go years of school to be a brewmaster, but yeah. I've learned through, you know. Great you know, brewmasters, I well, would imagine. And, and books and just yeah. like, you know, whatever you gotta do. Right, I mean, right. I tell people all the time, like, you could brew beer with me in a day. Yeah. I would just tell you what to do because it's all turning valves and, you know, yeah. that. It's when you really get down to it, um, figuring out the science stuff, the that's, science that's kind of what's gonna make you um, a good brewer. And now we're in the next part of the process that Logan finished up there, it pumped out, it goes to the fermenter, which goes through this heat exchanger, basically. And then we're into the, the fermenter, the fermenting towers here. We're at the point where we're, we're pretty consistent with what we know is happening and how fast right. it's gonna go. Um, but yeah, so these tanks are all jacketed with a glycol cooling solution. We drop that temperature way, way down to about 32 degrees. By doing that, all that stuff settles out. So yeast, hops, anything that we put in after the fact, settles out to the bottom in these conical bottoms we got going here. Yep. Uh, and then we're able to reuse that, that yeast that we've used um, on subsequent beers. So once it's sitting in that bright tank, it's carbonated, then they hook up a line from the canning line, gets sent over there, they keg it off and can it off, and then goes out go. to all over the world. All right, let's go see the canning process.
happens once you guys get the beer made, you gotta you gotta can it, you gotta put it in a keg, and you gotta get it out of here. By the way, the great thing about Drecker uh, is the artwork. Yep. I am just a huge fan of the artwork on your cans. And here's a this is just some of the labels. Who does the um, who does the artwork for you? Is it a bunch of different artists? The majority of them are done by a guy named Punch Gut. Okay. Uh, Matt, he's a guy, graphic design background, does that as his day job, but really got into, I mean, he's been doing gig posters, like grungy gig posters for yep. bands for years okay. and years and years. A lot of it is just kicking my idea, like brace for the G's right here. Uh, fear, the idea was like a zombie fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Well, yeah. nailed it, you know? <laughs> this is no small task in itself. Essentially what has happened, we fill all 16 ounce cans all blank cans, so you can see a bunch of blank cans. Uh, allows us, you know, when we started out with that, uh, allowed us a lot of flexibility with just doing like sep small amounts and hand labeling and things like that. Well, now we're up to the point where we're fully automated basically every step of the process except for the pack off portion, meaning when they actually are putting it off, putting those four ring collars on. Um, but yeah, this, this line we just got about a year ago. Um, counter pressure line, meaning uh, it actually creates a seal on top of the, the can itself. The lid sits on top of it and then uh, a roller comes in while the can is spinning and seals it. So the first one seals, so the can sits like this, yep. the first one seals like this, yep. and the second one crimps it over the top. So there you go. That's how they do it. Tom, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Appreciate it. We're here at Drecker again. This is the apple cobbler. We found out literally how it goes from malt and barley to Delicious beverage, all here right in Fargo, North Dakota at Drecker Brewing. For our friends at Coast Materials, this is how they do it. My name's Kevin Flynn, we'll see you next time. Can I open this?